Okay, now what I'm going to go through is show you some things that students have done wrong on their papers uh, so you can see what not to do. So automatically looking at this paper, what do you see that's wrong with it? Okay, the header. So they used one of those nice and cool word design headers that are in there, and even though they look great, they're not appropriate uh, for APA style paper. So the header's wrong. What else? What? Okay, good. The title is a bold and underlined. So uh, throughout this, there doesn't need to be anything bold, anything underlined uh, for this particular paper. Technically, when you start getting in and doing some different uh, categories and subcategories, if you're writing a full long paper, then you could use some different bold headers uh, or titles, but we don't need to worry about that for this one. So everything should be standard, 12-point font, uh, Times New Roman. Okay, so as we get into the essay here, as you start writing, um, here's an example of what I would like to see as you do your writing. So here we go, and according to Decision Tree Consulting, a London-based market research company reports that, and then this is a quote, the interactive whiteboard industry is expecting, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to the end of the quote here. So a few things. Uh, is it okay to use a quote from somewhere else? Yes, if you're going to use a quote, what do you need to do? And, okay, and put in quotation marks. Okay, so if you just, if you use a word for word and you just cite it, but don't put in quotation mark, that's plagiarism. All right, so if you're going to use a quote, uh, make sure that you cite it and you put it in quotation marks. It is best to introduce a quote or to kind of lead in a quote. So notice here in this example, they said, according to the author, et cetera, et cetera, and then here comes the quote. As compared to just right from the get-go, blammo, there's a quote. All right, it is much better to kind of lead into it and introduce it there. Uh, but as you do that, you'll put a quotation marks at the beginning and notice closely here at the end. So we have 2011 quote and then we have our citation. In APA, the period goes after the citation. So as we go and do this, we're going to put the author's name, the publication date, and then the page number. The only time you put the page number is if you're doing a quote. So let's say, for example, this wasn't a quote here. So I take this off. All right. Then in that case, then my citation would be something like this. Okay. And actually, even more accurately, in this case, um, what I would put here, this was kind of just put together. I'm not sure who this consulting is. Uh, but the author is Davis. What really should happen here is it should have according to Davis. And in this case, if it's not a direct quote right here, I can put the publication date right there. So according to Davis, a London base, blah, 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 is expecting Accenture. Then if I have that information at the beginning of my sentence, I do not need this at the end. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you build it in here, if you list the author's name in sentence, uh, then you can put the publication date. Now, if I did use a quote in this scenario, I could put according to Davis, and then whatever my quote is, like I had before. So at the end, I have quotation marks here. And then I could put page 22 at the end there. So anytime that you reference something, you need to make sure you have the author's name. This is their last name only, last name only, the publication date. And then if you do a quotation, a quote, then you uh, make sure you put the page number in there, and it would look something like that. Now, how many quotes should you use in this essay? Okay, minimal. Minimal quotes. This is a five to six page essay. There should be minimal quotes. Okay, I'm not looking for your ability to copy and paste other people's work. I'm looking for your ability to write. And so. Even if they have an amazing quote, your job is to put it into your own words. I'm looking for you to put things into your own words. Now, there may be, you know, a couple throughout your essay uh, that are very useful and, very, and help a lot for your essay, and that would be okay, uh, but you want to use them minimally. Uh, technically, if your quotation has more than 40 words, if I highlight this and I go down over here, I can see that this is... Um, well, this happens to be 36 words, but if it was 40 words, um, it should actually technically be indented in a different way. 
I'm not even going to get into that because you should not have a quote more than 40 words in this five to six page essay. There's no reason for you to have a quote more than 40 words. Uh, but for future reference, down the road when you write your 50 page thesis, um, and that scenario, you have a longer quote. Just keep in mind that we do a formatting a little bit different for quotes over that length. Okay, uh, so as we end our first paragraph, notice here on the X here, uh, so this essay will examine the various interactive whiteboard products available, effective strategies, etc., etc. This is a good thesis statement. Or I don't know if I say good, it is a thesis statement, at least it's there. At the end of your first paragraph, in general, you can break that rule a little bit, but in general, at the end of your first paragraph, the end of your introduction of your essay, put a thesis statement. Tell me, tell the reader what your essay is going to be about. It's not difficult. All you say is, this essay will examine, etc., etc. Uh, should you write, um, in this essay, I'm going to discuss with you, etc., etc. What's wrong with that? First person. Okay, again, everything needs to be third person. All right, so put a thesis statement at the end of your introduction. All right, um, as we go through here, as we're writing, here's an example. Many school districts will complain that smart boards cost too much during tough times like these. What's wrong with that sentence? Uh, no. Okay, the context of the sentence is it's an assertion. What is an assertion? Huh? An opinion. Okay, an assertion is a factual statement that you make uh, that has no backing to it. All right? So any type of statement you make here, you need to provide a citation. This may be true, uh, but you need to show me that. So maybe Davis in 2011 conducted a study and he surveyed a thousand schools on the use of interactive whiteboards. And one of the questions was, do you feel that white, interactive whiteboards are too much? And he found that this, so uh, if that was the case, then that would be appropriate. Uh, probably would be better to say, Davis found that 68% of the schools felt that interactive whiteboards were too expensive and why they weren't integrating them. Okay, uh, so any statement that you make throughout this essay that is kind of above and beyond general knowledge or something that you have put together uh, yourself, you need to back that with a reference. Now, that doesn't mean that after every sentence in your paper I want a reference, okay? Um, and typically, you know, if I will go along here and I'm, you know, I'm using, I'm writing a paragraph here that I've gotten from Davis and I'm putting some information, um, you know, I, I feel it's okay to write a couple sentences here and even if you're pulling it out of that information, not to necessarily reference it every time, uh, but I'll reference it at the beginning and then at the end of the paragraph. And to me, it's kind of identifying that, hey, this content in this paragraph is from there. Does that make sense? Um, but you may come back in the next sentence and need to reference somebody else, and that's okay. And then you would, could go back and forth. Uh, so make sure that you're providing references throughout this essay. Um, Keep going down here. Okay, here's another example of an assertion. It seems more children than not will participate harder and participate longer if there is music playing in the background. That may be a true statement, but you need to provide the reference to uh, identify that. Okay, so as you're going through, make sure that you're providing uh, references. Notice here, quick thing on numbers in APA. Uh, 1 through 9 should be spelled out with the letters. 10 and above, you would list the number. So you'd actually write 1, 0 for 10 and above. Uh, if anything else, if you said that three students experienced, then you would actually type out the letters for three. If you're putting a first, second, third, fourth, like you see here, uh, you do not use a superscript. Okay, this is what we call a superscript, where the ST are smaller and above. Uh, we don't do that in our APA format. When you're writing this, if you need to put second and you hit space and it automatically superscripts for you, all you have to do is hit the undo button and it'll take it back down. Okay? Or you can go into your preferences and tell it to not ever superscript, but in this scenario, simply hit the undo and it'll take it back to normal. All right, another sentence here as we move along. One thing that caught my eye was this, that delicious keeps all your bookmarks in one place. What's wrong with that? First person again, the caught my eye, all right, first person. Um, here's an example. 
of using a name. Okay. Uh, any type of software, hardware that you're discussing, you need to write the name as the company writes it. If you look at PowerPoint, uh, you will notice that PowerPoint is written as one word with a capital. If you need to go look at your programs to see how it actually looks, then do that. Uh, but you want to list it as they list it. So PowerPoint is one word with a capital P and a capital, or both capital P's, like that. A smart board. If you're talking about smart board, uh, typically smart board has capitals S M A R T and then board. All right. So when you're looking at talking about software and hardware, make sure you write them as the company writes them. If you are talking about some type of, let's say, smart board, again, make sure that you know the difference between the smart board and interactive whiteboard. Where interactive whiteboard is a general term, smart board is one specific brand. Okay. All right, I want to go down to the references page here as we get to our references. Okay, you need to list your references. So anything that you uh, reference in the text, in the body, that needs to be listed in your references page. The references should be set up in a proper way, which is what I'm going to demonstrate here uh, in the next lecture.